Now, the papers over the weekend were full of advice for David Cameron on how to deal with the UKIP threat, and the Prime Minister is keen to come out fighting. So what has he got planned? So the fight back begins. Think we've heard that before, haven't we? There's a lot of pressure on David Cameron. Yesterday, Home Secretary Theresa May told the BBC that the government's immigration target had been blown off course because of immigration from the EU. Following Mark Reckless's successful election last week, and with UKIP now polling at 16%, the Prime Minister is under pressure to get tough. So what's the plan? It's believed David Cameron is about to make a keynote speech on immigration, the contents of which are being hotly debated. It's thought number 10 is looking closely at a new report from the Open Europe think tank, suggesting the government should ban EU migrants from claiming in-work benefits such as tax credits, social housing and access to the NHS for up to five years. This morning, former Cabinet Minister Owen Paterson made a speech arguing that if re-elected, David Cameron should invoke Article 50 of the Lisbon Treaty, giving formal notice of Britain's intention to quit the EU. This would spark two years of negotiations ahead of a 2017 referendum. And we've been joined by the director of Open Europe, Mats Persson. He's in our Westminster studio. Welcome to The Daily Politics. Do you believe any attempt by David Cameron to limit the free movement of Labour within the EU is doomed? No, I don't. Depends on what you mean by limiting free movement of Labour. I think our proposal, which is basically rewriting the rules around access to benefits for EU migrants, the brilliance of that proposal is that it would allow free movement to stand uh, therefore, it will be negotiable in Europe. Other European leaders might be, might be willing to sign up to those changes, but it will also make a material difference at home oh. by, by restricting uh, tax credits in particular, which is a social policy, which is not supposed to be covered by free movement, restricting that to British workers for, for, uh, for, for, for a long period, uh, for EU migrants to have a qualification period to, to qualify for those uh, benefits. And I think that in my view, strikes the perfect, perfect compromise between uh, making a big difference at home but being achievable abroad. Right. When you say that that policy isn't doomed, can you just clarify for us that you do believe then that David Cameron, putting aside your policy just for the moment, we'll come to it in more detail, in-house benefits, uh, in work I should say, benefits, but in terms of limiting the numbers of migrants from the EU coming to Britain, can he actually do that as it stands at the moment in the current treaty organisation? Uh, I would argue that putting an outright cap on the number of EU migrants who come here uh, will not be compatible with the right. EU membership and in fact it would actually be very difficult to pursue that policy outside the European Union as well because both Norway and Switzerland which I know is Douglas Carswell's favorite uh, uh, model outside the EU both are subject to EU free movement rules so in fact they actually take in more EU migrants per head than the UK does uh, ironically so, so whether inside or outside the EU I think Britain will live with some sort of a uh, free movement or immigration arrangement with the rest of the European Union. The question is how to manage that in a fair manner, and I think right. that's where our proposal is, comes in. Is it in. fair, though? Is your policy fair if you've got a Polish plumber who is in work in the UK who's paying taxes? Why can't that Polish plumber claim tax credits, for example, just like his or her British counterpart, in the same way a British worker in Spain or Poland would be able to do the same? You know, I don't know exactly what their tax arrangements there, but why would that be fair here? Well, there are a couple of things there. The first one is that in most other countries, uh, there is no similar thing to tax credits. Uh, other countries are much more contribution-based. So you don't have this dilemma in the first place. And what we're proposing is to put the British system more in line with the continent continental contribution-based system. That's the first thing. The second thing is, uh, why don't we extend uh, tax credits to migrants from outside the European Union? That will be the logical extension of that argument. Uh, we don't because we think it's right that uh, migrants from outside the EU should be here for a certain period of time to, uh, to contribute and then they will have full access to, to the welfare system. And thirdly and finally, tax credits are not tax policy, they are social policy designed to make work pay for British workers, to make British workers uh, transition into the labour market again. So therefore they are social policy. Free movement was never intended, was never meant to include mutual and unrestricted access to other countries' social policies. So right. that's what we would argue. Matt's person, thank you. Thank Dominic Greve, it looks as if the strategy by David Cameron and the Conservatives is to fight UKIP on their terms, on anti-immigration and anti-Europe. Is that wise? I don't think that's the strategy at all. Really? Tell me how it isn't the strategy, that strategy. The strategy is about how do we ensure 
the economic well-being and quality of life for our citizens in years to come, having just come through the most difficult economic crisis in modern times. And I have no doubt that the proper way of approaching the election is to point out the achievements that we have uh, got to our credit in, in government in terms of addressing that issue, and to say that we can take sensible decisions in future to try to ensure those two things, economic uh, uh, eco prosperity and quality of life. And on quality of life, immigration clearly plays an important role. The volume of immigration is affecting people's perception of their quality of life because of the pressure it places on infrastructure and their fears about population growth. And what can you and do about are... the volume of EU migration? The suggestion that's just been made is an interesting one. We know that the benefit regime that we have in this country does may well provide an attraction. Right. The difficulty with this proposal is I think it's discriminatory. Right. And therefore that raises a so, different so set of problems. So does that rule it out in your mind that you I, can't have a discriminatory I would need benefit to, I would, system? I would need to look more carefully at right. the proposal. But I think it, pre it presents some difficulties. But it does also highlight the oddity of the British system which offers credits for being in work and that is one of the reasons I suspect why we have attracted so many people into this country quite apart from the fact that we have a, an economy that in relative terms in Europe is booming and that's one of the reasons why we've been such a magnet so you can certainly look at trying to alter the benefit system yeah, to, re to remove perverse incentives if you... but I think it is harder and would be much more difficult to discriminate. Right. You still haven't answered the question about why you are fighting on UKIP terms. There has been... And I've just told there you has been, not. Well, no, you are talking about immigration. There is a speech coming up. They've been talking about Europe. Tory MPs have filed into the studio one after the other saying unless the government gets a grip on those two issues, UKIP will take more seats. Why are you fighting the party on its ground? Well, I'm not. And indeed, my colleagues, as far as I can see, from what the Prime Minister has been saying to us, and indeed the message that's gone out to the party, is that we should rightly be concentrating on economic prosperity and well-being. That involves a discussion about immigration, but it certainly doesn't involve immigration becoming the only discussion. Right. Because, in fact, even if you had a UKIP government, which heaven forfend, you would still be having problems with uh, immigration. It, these are complex problems, and in part, the United Kingdom is the victim of its own success in terms of its economic right. recovery well, in okay. terms of bringing well, let's, people in. Well, let's just bring our other guests in. I mean, Douglas Carswell, first of all, are you worried that the Conservatives are now parking their tanks on your lawn no, on this not, issue? Not they, are the ones, they are the ones who can actually do something about oh. the issues of EU migration. And we're going to have this speech from David Cameron, and they are building up to taking away well, your momentum. You, you simply can't control our borders while we remain in the European Union. And nothing David Cameron is going to propose will change that central fact. He, he's barking up the wrong tree. Trying to uh, bring in these proposals, which Europe probably won't even let us do because they're supposedly discriminatory under EU law. We, until we leave the European Union, we cannot control our borders. But what is interesting here, having set the agenda on immigration and Europe, UKIP is actually moving on to talking about other things. Britain is in the state we're in because Britain is run in the interests of vested interests, in the energy market, in banking, in politics. We're talking about a comprehensive agenda for real change in this country. If the Conservatives think they're going to stop that by, by following us uh, I, I, in proposing that we should reduce the number of people coming into this country, then, then good luck to them. But, but, but you know, that battle, we've moved on from that. What would you say that you're going to say the only reason, really, that people vote for UKIP at the moment is A, in protest, and B, on those issues of immigration in UKIP? I would say UKIP. that, Joe, you should spend some more time outside BBC Studios in London. If you had come to Clacton, where we got a 60% 60 60 swing towards us, uh, a 60% uh, increase in, in, in market share, we mentioned the word immigration once, a single occasion. We, 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 in a by election, We fought that on the basis of political reform, of change. We've got a system of, of crony vested interests who run this country, and we need real change so that, so that this country is no longer presided over by the same sofa gang in Westminster who serially get things wrong. Frank, Frank Douglas's message becomes more strident by, by, by the minute. I mean, I have, firstly, Douglas, I have to say to you, a lot of immigration was being raised. Immigration is clearly a very important issue which mainstream parties, and all political parties, should be paying attention to. But do you accept that you've only really started paying attention to it since UKIP has managed to take votes from you? Well, that's not correct, actually. Well, which is not correct? They have taken votes from you but, because they've no, just won but, a by election. But it's, it's wrong to say we didn't pay some attention to it because when we came into government in oh, 2010... You made as a promises. Coalition... You made promises. Well, Let's talk about one of the promises. The promise was to bring down EU migration to the level of tens well, of thousands. The, hang on. The promise was to bring down migration to tens of thousands and the difficulty which which Theresa May and indeed the governments had, is that having been actually very successful in putting controls on non-EU migration,
migration. What I suspect wasn't anticipated was that the level of EU migration would rise so markedly when the United EU Kingdom started to form. Well, and that then raises the next issue, which Douglas has not even touched on, which is the benefits and downsides of high levels of migration from the EU. Right. And well, if you simply say you're going to cut yourself off from the rest of Europe, you are going to have to follow through with the implications for our national economy. And the next thing that will happen is that 10 years down the road, people will say, well, actually, we're getting much poorer. We've left the EU. But like Australia, and, like Switzerland? Do well, they have national control well, hang on, we'll over come on immigration to, we'll policy? Come on to Norway they, and they Switzerland. benefit from social mobility and, what do and we just, labor mobility. But, but Douglas, they also, they also have, quite high, levels, levels, don't talk also have quite high levels of migration, uh, Douglas. And they are countries which wish to expand their population. Right. Whereas, interestingly, me, in the United Kingdom, that, people on the whole don't want to do so. Let me put that, because Max Pearson said that very clearly. If you look at the levels of migration to those countries who are outside the EU but are still part of the European economic area, they have very high levels of migration, higher than here. Arguing in favour of being able to control our borders is not the same as saying we wish to close would our borders. Would you like more migrants no, then coming no, to Britain? No, I, I wouldn't, but I recognise that if we had control over our borders, it would be possible to make the case in favour of uh, a, a managed system of migration that benefited our economic needs and, and, and the skills that we need in this country. Australia does it, Switzerland does it, they're outside the EU. Is, we need to leave in order to benefit too. Is Ed Miliband also right in chasing this agenda of trying to be tough on immigration? You know, first of all, I've been talking about immigration for, you know, I remember doing a big survey in the constituency in 2008, uh, so this isn't new. The second thing is this chart of the, you know, apart from you, the rest of us need to get out on the doorsteps. I've been fighting a marginal seat for the last 17 years. You know, I don't take any lectures from anybody for about getting out on the doorsteps. And just because I spent, you know, half my working week down at Westminster to represent the people who elected me does not make me part of a sofa elite. So let's just cut I, that one for starters. I, I agree in your so, case. So Absolutely. There, yeah, so, you know, but... Right, and, but and what, have on, what have you got to say? What have you got to say on immigration? Gets, get, but then they got to immigration. Why is the fear? On, on, on the one hand, we need the immigration. If, if all the immigrants stop working at the Queen Elizabeth Hospital in my constituency, you know, they right. they're, they're work out. So why soon. is Ed Miliband? Why are we hear from Ed Miliband and Yvette Cooper that they need to be tougher on immigration? Ah. That they've ignored the concerns of Labour voters in their constituencies? Because first of all, are our borders as secure, even within the legal limits, as they should be? No, they're not. That's why Yvette Cooper said we get a thousand extra border officers to actually control our borders. The second thing is that, uh, that there are people here who shouldn't be here and they should, you know, we, we need to be tougher. Oh, you know, if I've, I've got... Over a million, I suspect. Yeah, you know, on, on our advice yeah. surgeries, people yeah. who have been, been bounced about for, for seven, ten years... And what just, right, a while Labour was in power. And, and you know, and, and now the Tories who said they were going to put it right, right, they did. So there's a very legitimate fear, but let's just be clear. The, the immigration label is very is, is played on on the fear of the other. If you're in a city like Birmingham, if you sort of say foreigners, other, you've just insulted 85 percent of the population. So is Ed Miliband Africa. wrong to pursue that rhetoric? No, Why isn't Ed Miliband promoting the benefits of immigration, he, following on from your argument doing both. and saying, is he? Yes, maybe, he's doing both. I mean, you know, he, he's maybe, a son maybe, of an immigrant. I'm maybe, an immigrant. Maybe, maybe, you know, maybe if Parliament and those we elect could control immigration, then we could have a positive debate that talked about the contribution that migration makes to this country. Oh, so, long as we're, so long as we're unable to control immigration, you're going to and have... And you, UKIP is going to have that debate, be part of that debate about the positive benefits our, of migration. Our, our proposal is to allow Parliament right, well, let's, to decide let, the level let's of immigration. Talk, just very briefly, is, because I need to move on to yeah, something but else. But it is because... massively simplistic, because yeah. Douglas is going to have to engage with the consequences of leaving the EU. Now, I know that he thinks I'm that's... I'm happy a, to do that. Right, well, we're going to do that. Wonderful idea, but actually there are potentially some very serious downsides from doing that which will impact on people's quality of life and their prosperity and that's a debate I'm very eager to have which is why I want a referendum mm. but it's a it's a debate that needs to be had and I'll listen very carefully to what Douglas has to say there are some arguments for leaving there are a lot of arguments that in fact the United Kingdom will suffer very badly right well in let's the long have a, term from doing so. let's ask Douglas Carswell some questions about what would happen if the UK were to leave the EU let's just have a listen to what you said yesterday to uh, Andrew Neil Mark and I have gone from being two MPs in a party of 300 to being two MPs, UKIP's only two MPs. And if you're going to do that, yep, sometimes you've got to learn that what you, what, it's not just what you say that counts, it's, it's, it's what people hear. But he didn't say he misspoke. He said the policy changed on Wednesday. No. And I'm a bit sore about how that came out. No, UKIP's policy has never, ever so been... So he's wrong. 
UKIP's policy has never been to suggest okay. that people who are here legitimately should, should, should leave. That's absolutely wrong. UKIP's policy is that we have control over our borders, and that is perfectly reasonable. What would be totally right. unreasonable is to question the legitimate right of people to, to live here. Right. Well, Douglas Carswell, that was you yesterday. Mark being Mark Reckless, um, of course, your parliamentary colleague. And he did say something quite different. You say it's never been UKIP policy in terms of repatriation of EU citizens here. Um, but in fact, in 2010, that was the UKIP no, manifesto. No, no, Ensure all EU citizens who came to Britain after the 1st of January 2004 are treated in the same way as citizens from other countries not in the EU. No. UKIP's policy is to control our borders, so we have but social cohesion. that was the policy, wasn't it? Our policy has never been to repatriate. Where is the word repatriation in that? Well, that, that the is, implication there onto, is to be no, treated in the same way. You're projecting something onto it that isn't there, Joe. With respect, UKIP's policy no is to control our borders. No right to stay. It is, it is not to question the residency status of people Shh. who've come here quite legitimately. Apart from anything, well, it, would be, it would be wrong legally to change, to retrospectively, yes. to change but the Douglas law. Douglas Carswell, show I, me I, I, in I, I, there, where does it say, where does it say automatic right to stay in this country. People who've come here legitimately will stay here regardless right. of Britain's future status in the EU and there's nothing in the manifesto that contradicts that. Right. How many years would EU citizens living here have to have been resident in the UK to be accepted here? I, I hope that anyone who's living here now and has come here legitimately would, would have a legal right to stay here. That, right. That we want social cohesion. You hope. What's the actual policy? What would actually happen to them? If you're here legally today and we were to leave today, you would have yes. a legal right to stay. You absolutely. would have. You would have absolutely. absolute legal right absolutely. to stay. What would happen to family members of EU citizens living here who then get UK citizenship? Would their wife or husband and children back in Poland, for example, get citizenship too, automatically? I would hope that that would be the case because I think you need to... You, you shouldn't divide families. You should actually... And this doesn't just relate but to... But you don't know, do you? You hope. We, we, should, we should... Well, the, the, the details of the negotiation... Well, would, that's would, an important but, detail but, but, about but, splitting but families I, up, I, isn't I, it? I'm, I'm in politics for social cohesion. The idea that you can divide families is simply wrong. Right. And I think we need an immigration that... policy that allows people, allows people to, 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 to belong and to take pride in belonging. And the idea that you would somehow exclude people, it, it's, 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 it's wrong. It's simply wrong. Right. You say it's wrong, and I, and I believe you um, in terms of what you say, but is that UKIP policy? It is. There was a big difference between what Mark Reckless said in terms of suggestions of repatriation of EU citizens. You're saying... You you hope that's what will happen yeah. because it's wrong to split up families. No one who is, is it UKIP policy? No one who is legitimately in the UK today, no one, would have their residency rights changed as a result of leaving the EU. All right, we're going to leave it there.